MCI Center in Washington, D.C., where the number 10 seed, Oklahoma, is ready to take on the 7 seed, Indiana. What an afternoon it was here. Two games that went to the final buzzer. Washington beat Xavier by one, and Richmond surprised South Carolina by one. Later tonight, Connecticut takes on Fairleigh Dickinson. Hi, everyone. Sean McDonough along with Bill Raftery. Happy to have you with us. Until yesterday, the big story about this game was about Bob Knight. Would he be the coach when Indiana took the floor tonight? He was fined $10,000, given the choice to pay the fine or sit out for one game in the NCAA tournament after his outburst about referee Ted Valentine after a late season Big Ten Conference game. He decided to pay the fine out of his own pockets, and he will be here tonight. Well, he expressed his displeasure with the media yesterday over the fine, but he's also unhappy about his team. They're playing 35 minutes, not finishing games. He's happy with their input, their involvement. They just haven't been able to put teams away late, particularly late in the season. Indiana has lost in the first round of the tournament each of the last three years, and the same is true of Oklahoma. They've been here three years in a row and have lost in the first round three years in a row, so somebody's going to break a three-year first-round losing streak in this game. For Kelvin Sampson, Ryan Humphrey, the freshman forward, joined by Robert Allison, Evan Wiley, Corey Brewer, their leading scorer, and Michael Johnson as the starting five. And for Bob Knight in the NCAA tournament, for the 22nd time in 27 years as head coach at Indiana. His starting lineup has the outstanding freshman Luke Recker with William Gladness, Andre Patterson, Michael Lewis, and the Hoosiers leading scorer A.J. Guyton, last year's Big Ten Freshman of the Year, this season averaging 16.6 per game. The officials are Bob Sitoff, Rich Sanfilippo, John Sweeney, Indiana and White, and the tip was controlled by Evan Wiley of Oklahoma. And the Hoosiers go, man, man, Sean McDonough. And it's Guyton guarding Johnson. Humphrey. Ryan Humphrey. The key, I think, is can Oklahoma Mike run their sets or can Indiana be disruptive? Strictly passing game against Oklahoma's. Man, man. Andre Patterson, nice move. That's a goal of 10. There's the shot was spotted by Ryan Humphrey. Tell you, early in the game, it's a pretty good message. Even if it is goaltending, there's a lot of people in here. Just bring it down. We're going to send it back. Michael Johnson, a junior from Las Vegas. Junior college transfer in the Oklahoma this year. Uh, Brewer with the ability to post up too with Michael Lewis on him. You may see him dribble or post. Allison and Humphrey, and they swing it again to Johnson. 12 on the shot clock. Brewer, their best player. Tough shot. Also for a foul on Michael Lewis. That's one of those play on jobs. I think he was drifting. Pretty good job by Lewis with the defense. Now but Brewer has that ability to bounce and become Michael a close Lewis. presence as he did that time, elevating He's over Lewis. Foul. First foul on the sophomore from Jasper, Indiana. And for the Brewer will shoot two. Corey Brewer at the line. Shooting two. He was first team all Big 12. This season, averaging 20.8 points overall. And in conference in the Big 12, he was even better than that at 24.4. The lead all scores in Big 12 conference games. Brewer made both free throws. He's an 80% free throw shooter. It's Oklahoma by two, one minute in. Allison with record is going to have to play him tough. Record great at using bumps, getting himself free. They also switch exchanges. Gladness fed Michael Lewis. Now Patterson, a three-point try. Rebounded by Allison. Brewer. Nice. Intercepted by Patterson. He saw that pass to the post coming and picked it off. May defend better than anybody in the country that post team. AJ knocks it a three. A three-pointer. No easy entries against Indiana. You got to be sound. Give yourself a little passing lane and crisp passes. Knight, an excellent three-point shooter. Nearly 44% for the year. Inside, Humphrey shot spins out. Patterson the rebound. Three on three for Indiana. Boy, they get it to that box, don't they, beautifully? Record. Nearly lost it over the end line. 
Anderson from just inside. The act makes it 7 to 4 IU. Talking to Kelvin yesterday about all the sets that his dad's had a great influence on him. A little bump here gives Brewer a nice look, unable to convert. And Samson's dad, John Ned Samson, for 30 years with a high school coach in North Carolina. The pass from Oklahoma oh, Lewis oh. over the head of Andre Patterson. We'll be getting some of you out to the tip of the Illinois State Tennessee game in Sacramento. A tip scheduled for 7.50 Eastern Time, about five minutes from now. And We'll get you out there. Those of you who are expecting to see that game will be there in time for the tip. Other influence was uh, Judd Heathcote, who I think a lot of the sets here are similar to the ones run at Michigan State. Brewer got away with a travel. Allison missed from right along the three-point line. Both sound getting back, protecting for fast breaks. Patterson active early, and that's a key for Indiana. He's had a very up and down career, but when he's on, he can be great. He's just, he can be solid. I mean, making that jumper, he's got terrific ability. He's just got to sustain it. Indiana leads nine to four. Wobbling coming into the tournament, having lost four of their last five. Their only win in the last five was against Ohio State, the team that finished last in the Big Ten. Allison, that's a three Robert for Allison. Robert Allison. And that's how much the game has changed. They drive right to the rim and kick it back out for the knockdown three. Wrecker. That's a three. Luke Wrecker. Uh, Allison can have his hands full. He can't start peeking. Wrecker, the freshman from Auburn, Indiana, shoots 35% from three, averages 12 and a half per game. Indiana's has missed just one of six shots to this point, four to the ten. Luke said before the game, this is what it's all about, waiting for the NCAA. Johnson, was it deflected? The officials confirmed Indiana now ball. Ball it to be Indiana's ball. When we come back, IU leads by five at our first timeout. early in the second half. I'm holding in my hand the real story of Oklahoma's season, the injury logbook, page after page, filled with 65 different injuries. The trainer, Alex Brown, told me that this is by far the worst year that he has ever had. Never went more than two games without somebody going down. It got so bad at one point they had to suit up a couple of assistants so they could practice five on five. But then assistant Benny Seltzer went down with a stress fracture in his back and he can't practice. Alex Brown says that he himself has been remarkably healthy this season Sean, but he does think he will have a nervous breakdown when the season's <laughs> over. Back to you guys. Uh, and Coach Sampson has just seven players that he feels comfortable about using in the game. Wide variety of injuries. They've had 65 different injuries among the entire team that have caused players to either miss games or practices. Among the injuries, broken noses. Two players out right now with back problems, herniated discs, they've had stress fractures. As Andrea mentioned it's been unbelievable. And one player in the game right now, Eduardo Nahara, is playing with a fractured bone in his ankle. He's on crutches between games, does not practice at all, but then comes out and plays. I don't know why Alex Brown's complaining. He's a moaner. He's got things to do. Sounds like a football team. First good open look without a challenge as Lewis got there a little bit late on Brewer. And Corey Brewer. Has four points. That's his first field goal. Tough shot. Guyton's three wouldn't drop it. Gladness kept it alive for Guyton. Nice play. Gladness in traffic. Fouled by Wiley. And that's two fouls on Evan Wiley. And because of the factors that Andrea mentioned, the amazing number of injuries for Oklahoma, they can't afford to get any of the healthy seven in foul trouble. Well, record's good without the basketball. When you're a good offensive player like Brewer, you learn to use the bumps, get yourself free, turn and knock that thing down. The big thing when you you think of Patterson taking Wiley away from the rim, even though Wiley is going out, he's a better post defender. He's not good out the floor. Kelvin was telling us yesterday that much was that matchup was a dilemma for him. Renzi Stone, number 33, has replaced. Evan Wiley in the lineup. Gladness now has four points after the free throws, and Indiana has opened up a seven-point lead early. 
Good ball movement. They don't waste dribbles. You check out early scores of other action tonight. Good help. Patterson lost the ball to Nahara. And Ryan Humphrey paying attention to detail there, scraping. Brewer, that's another three. They, they, they use bumps well. When you screen down, he pops out, then gets a little bump to turn and square up. Brewer is 10 of their 15 points. He's a senior from West Memphis, Arkansas. William Gladness of Indiana is also from West Memphis, Arkansas. They have quite a history together. It will tell you about as the ball game goes along. Guyton at all kinds of time. And Rector was the guy that made it. He scrambled on the floor, made sure they controlled the basketball. Second three-pointer of the game for A.J. Guyton. And he has six points. Each team shooting well from behind the line, each with three three-point field goals. Always looking to feed that post. Free really offense in the sense that they look to screen, don't waste effort. And he's looking out for you, Lewis. Five second, five second call. Johnson closely guarded without making a move toward the basket. The third turnover committed by the Sooners. I think Hub wants to get into the offense sooner. Dribble the basketball. You just mentioned that they don't waste the bounce. Shooting numbers eye-popping here in the first seven minutes. Well, we've seen great basketball today. First two games were unbelievably entertaining. And these two teams are off to a crisp start. After the Patterson miss, it's Oklahoma on offense. And Humphrey. Didn't get the roll on the foul line jumper. Gladness the board. Oh, Guyton, tough, tough pass. Threw an ankle high to Wrecker. Nahara, fractured ankle and all. Managed to move it to Brewer, but then he kicked it out of bounds. Now, you mentioned Nahara's foot. I mean, the, you'll see the atrophy in the leg as we pan down. One leg much thinner than the other. You could pick that out, couldn't you? No, you have very good <laughs> eyesight. There you go. Yes, you can. The calf definition. Mm -hmm. Number 21, Richard Mandeville. 4-3, the turnovers, Oklahoma. With one more than Indiana. Richard Mandeville has come into the game for IU. Seven-footer wearing number 21. And Luke Jimenez is in at guard, number 12. Guyton watched Nahara run by, and Guyton dropped it as third three. All right, pump fake. You go to practice, that's a drill they use every day. Pump, get him up, little bounce, knock it down. The lead quickly goes back to seven for Indiana after Oklahoma had moved within one. Nahara trying to set up in front of Wrecker. Stone the left-hander from 16 feet. And he's drifting out now. They're going to have to come out and play. Gladys has been sinking in the lane, jamming things up. Stone's a sophomore from Tulsa. His dad, Larry, owned the Tulsa team in the CBA, the fast breakers. Wrecker fouled by Nahara. Nahara limping toward Kelvin Sampson. And Kelvin telling both of us yesterday how tough a kid Nahara is. I mean, that time took a little bit of a shot, but once again, the ability to move without the basketball as Luke Wrecker gets himself free. The action, the defense reacting, we're going to see a little pop. Good, solid screen. And now you run out. Look at this little pump, Sean. Keeping the feet behind the line. It only works or looks good when you knock that shot down, but all set by a nice screen. And for Indiana, number four, Luke Rector. Nahara has been playing with the fractured radicular bone in his ankle since late January. He would have aggravated that injury. I mentioned he cannot practice. He gets bone stimulation after every game. Then he goes on crutches until the next day. Kelvin lamenting the fact that they, that's why they're pretty good at half-court offense because they haven't been able to really go up and down. Guyton. 
little bit longer three that time, and Brewer took the rebound to Stone. Indiana by five. Contact and an offensive foul called on Corey Brewer, his first. Offensive foul. 11-15 remaining in the first half. Indiana has a five-point lead. And as the band plays on, we remind you that near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable. Indiana with the ball, leading by five, nearly midway through the first half. Sean McDonough, Bill Raffrey, Andrea Joyce at the new MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Folks here at George Mason University are our hosts, and they have done a splendid job as the people running this site. Record. Nice move to the basket. Sure, they did a nice job handling the 1-2-1-1 one, 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 three-quarter court pressure as well. You've got to close out under control against Indiana. Andrea Joyce informs us that Nahara just had the wind knocked out of him, and he's ready to return. He's at the scorer's table right now, about to check back in. And loose side banging. I guess Patterson gets teed up with Humphrey. I think it's the first foul on Andre Patterson, the senior from Abilene, Texas. Here comes Nahara back into the game. Second Stone goes out. For Oklahoma, number 21, Eduardo. Eduardo's a sophomore from Chihuahua, Mexico. Replacing Stone. Right inside on the inbounding play, the ball on double Ryan Humphrey. And he has four, the freshman from Tulsa. And Richard Mandeville not ready to play, and the inbound defender permitted that pass under the basket. Guyton trying to use a high screen from records. Guyton record, Jimenez, Mandeville, and Patterson for Coach Knight. Perimeter guys can stick it. Guyton, Jimenez, and record. And Patterson can make a three as well. That one spun out to Michael Johnson. Midway through the half now. Corey Brewer trying to get it inside to Humphrey. Both Mandeville and record saw that one coming. Johnson dives on the floor, but Patterson wound up with a loose ball. Tough entry from the top like that, Sean. Nice run by Patterson. Good travel. Good call by Bob Sittoff. Patterson shuffled his feet after catching the pass on the move. You think he expected it? The pass? Yeah, I no. think he wasn't ready for it. Maybe he'd make a move. He had a pass to the box on the baseline. Guessing that Bob Knight will likely be on his best behavior tonight. Generally, after his celebrated blow-ups, he does behave in a civil manner and at times yesterday at the press conference he was downright jovial. Nice pressure on the passer. So I'm going to give you a stat in a second. Luke Record. Foul and a reach in by Allison but a good foul. He'll make Record earn the two at the free throw line and it's the first foul on Robert Allison, senior from El Reno, Oklahoma. Center CBS Sports Line is the best place to follow Allison. all the March mayhem. You'll get re fouls. Bob Knight average a year in the last ten years. One. I'm not going to ask you because I know what you'd speculate. I have no idea. One. That's his That's average. Greg Elko told me. Year. Who told you that? Bob? Yes. <laughs> you are tough. SID. Well, I don't think so much it's the number. I think the, obviously over the years it's when these episodes have happened. They were a major options. This recent fine. Coach Knight elected to pay the third time that either he or Indiana University has had to pay a fine of $10,000 or more for an episode in which he's been involved. Nahara might have had a shot deflected. Patterson was up high defending. Of course, this time around, Indiana University again wanted to pay the fine. Bob said, no, I'm going to pay this fine myself. And the university president reluctantly agreed, according to a statement released by the school. There will be a rule change next year, I'm sure, on the rim being pulled down on the shot. Mm -hmm. And that, that was part of the incident and one of the reasons that uh, the official was admonished as well. Record. Shot blocked by Humphrey, but a blocking foul called underneath the basket on Nahara. And that is his second. By that going at to take care of the injured player, no, and the Bob then got the technical. No, that's uh, right. Well, the officials got the rule right, right about grabbing the Absolutely. rim. Bob Knight wanted the goaltend, and he was wrong because once the rim was grabbed, that wiped mm -hmm. out any chance of 
the goaltend. Bob Knight's contention was he should have been allowed to come onto the floor to tend to his injured player on the play, and he was right about that. So the conference ruled that the second of the three technicals should not have been given to Knight by Ted Valentine. That's why Ted Valentine, the official, has been mm -hmm. admonished by the league and will not be able to work non-conference games involving Big Ten teams next year. Uh, concentrating on the offensive end of things here, Wrecker solid with the dribble, the jump shot. I mean, something that Bob Knight has been looking for, somebody maybe to step up. Young guy with some talent, they take the 20. And Bill Packer brought up a good point. The rim has been pulled down. Game has ended as the buzzer sounds of the ball in midair, so even if Michigan State makes the two technical free throws, the game's can't over, win. they can't win. Well, it, I think the rule will be changed to intent next year. Yes. But two well-regarded coaches, the particular incident here, Sean. I'd like to go and see what, what is with that player. Now it's time at this point. Bob Knight came on the court and was given a technical foul by Ted Valentine. He objected strenuously because he felt correctly that he had the right to check on his injured player. And then was given a third technical, even though the second has caused for ejection. And get another one, even after you get ejected, if you hang around. Allison hits a three. They think of all the man-to-man -man teams in that Big 12. Kansas jumps out, Iowa State jumps out, Missouri jumps out, and they are used to this kind of pressure, but Indiana is getting out quickly on the shooters. That's one of the few times. Oh, they get, they get Lewis, I think. Mm -hmm. Lewis with the push. Of course, the only other question I would ask relative to the video we just saw is what happened to Coach Knight's concern for record once he got the second technical? All of a sudden, well, he knew how tough he was. was his thought process at all. He was still on the floor being tended to by the medical staff, but he was a distant memory. I'll tell you one thing about record playing with a broken rib, they tell us. I mean, a certain amount of toughness. Another good little pop-out jumper. Evan Wiley called for a foul on the rebound action. This foul is on the Sooners. Two fouls, three fouls on Wiley. So that's a big concern early for Oklahoma. Oklahoma over the first team foul limit. Ryan. And we're going to stay because it's a one and one situation. William Gladness. number 30, William Gladness. Mentioned he's from West Memphis, Arkansas. Grew up on the same street as Corey Brewer. 18th Street. They went to the same high school, although Gladness did not play high school basketball. Corey Brewer, of course, did. It's more to the story that we'll tell you about as the night goes along. The night of Indiana has an eight-point lead over Oklahoma with eight minutes left in the half. Oklahoma and Indiana, the Hoosiers with an eight-point lead, just under eight minutes to play in the first half. We'll keep you abreast of that game via the score at the top of your screen while we take you out and take a look at what's happening in Hartford. The running Rebels against Princeton, the Tigers in white. Nevada, Las Vegas, Clark was on top early in this game, but Bill Rafter. Thank you, Greg and Clark. While you're one away, one, Corey Lewis. Brewer missed a three-point shot for Oklahoma. Andre Patterson scored in the lane for Indiana. Then Robert Allison missed inside and also missed a follow-up try for Oklahoma and committed a foul as the play went back up the court. That sent Michael Lewis to the line for the one and one, which you just saw. That's everything that happened while we were away. Brewer misses another three. Out of bounds. It'll be Oklahoma ball. The Sooners down by 10, Sooners facing their ball. largest deficit with 621 remaining in the first half. Indiana shooting 67%. And have capitalized on Oklahoma's turnovers for 12 of their 32 points. And they played great defense, Indiana, Sean. Nice jump stop. <laughs> Murray Brewer. Be tough. Going to the goal. Corey Brewer has 12. He's been Oklahoma's leading scorer in 19 of their last 20 games. And he scored 20 points or more in 15 of the last 20. And Patterson thinking more offense, Sean. Screening, getting himself free for these type of looks. He's a different player this evening. Looking like he's going to have one of his good nights. He has 10 points. He averages 12 per game. Former Parade All-American, McDonald's All-American. He's a senior, Cooper High School in Texas. Naharaf from the company inside the line. 
that first basket for Eduardo. And Gladness really gambled and led him to the basket there. Right in the skip to Lewis. Patterson missed the three. Good position inside for Charlie Miller. Charlie and that's the big guy outside. Drags one of their big people. Not hurrah that time. Not used to playing a center that far from the rim. Miller, the senior from Miami, with his first two points. Johnson. He's open on the return pass from Brewer. Three Michael Johnson, Johnson has Johnson. three points. From Brewer. Oklahoma has to toughen up on this end. Slide through screen, stay at home on their guy. Look, they're tagging the guy late. Look at this, everybody's trailing. Indiana continues to shoot the lights out. That's 11 points Lewis. for A.J. Guyton. That's his first two-point field goal. Four and a half minutes left in the half. Indiana dominating up front, outscoring OU's front line by 14 points. Where Johnson can stop and go, can he? Great foot speed. No back cut. He's really improved as the season has gone along. Kelvin Sampson said Johnson was a typical point guard coming out of junior college a little bit out of control early in the season but as he got it under control Oklahoma improved as a team well he needs it and anybody does a point guard who can understand the offense get it to the right people stop looking for himself usually in junior college you're a prolific scorer and you like to jack it up here he's got to run the show organize the offense and generally let Brewer do the damage Foul was on Michael Lewis. That is his third. So he's gone to the bench. Luke Jimenez in at guard for the Hoosiers. And Wiley of Oklahoma is on the bench with three. Humphrey grabbed by Charlie Miller. That's what Indiana does well, though. Look to help your partner out. They got a post pass. Don't leave him alone. That ball goes down. Try and scrap. Deflect it away. Good attention. Five team fouls now on Indiana. Four minutes left in the half. Indiana by nine. The double up on the box. Humphrey all alone. They don't see him. And they got Nahara with the clear out. He has been extending the left arm. They don't permit you to swim in the low box area. That's three on Nahara. So Kelvin Sampson playing tonight with basically a seven-man team as two of his key players up front, Wiley and Nahara, saddled with three fouls each. And you can see that. You're trying to extend. The timing's got to be better. Reverse the ball, then you duck in and hold the guy off. Kelvin pointed to his head. you got to think a little bit out there. Great story about his relationship with his father, calling him after ball games. Kelvin Sampson told us yesterday he has... Called his dad, John, at home in North Carolina after every game that he has coached throughout his 15 year college head coaching career. Doesn't need to call him tonight because dad is here. Dad doesn't like what he sees. His son's team trails by 11. We're looking at Coach Kelvin Sampson's parents, John and Ava Sampson. You mentioned Coach Sampson, great athlete and a great high school coach in North Carolina for about 30 years, and Kelvin calls him after every game. Matter of fact, John Sampson, Kelvin's dad, set the school scoring record at the school that both he and Kelvin Sampson attended, University of North Carolina at Pembroke. And John Sampson was the first inductee ever into that school's Hall of Fame. He was a three-sport athlete there, played baseball, football, and basketball. Now they're going to have to execute. Nice little entry pass there. And, and the one little clincher was he was at the College of Idaho. They played Northwest Nazarene in Eastern Oregon. A three-day road trip. So Storm Blizzard called the father at 7 in the morning. He was up all night waiting for his son to call. So. That's right. Carmen said after that he learned to call immediately after every game because he didn't want his parents to worry if the phone call didn't come right when they expected it. Brewer passed it out to the wing. Indiana bench wanted to travel as Brewer went into the traffic. Three minutes left in the half. Guyton deflected into the backcourt, therefore not a violation, but the shot clock has run down to 15 seconds. Allison, very good without the basketball. They got to hug him. That's why the post pass was open. 
Bones' pass was deflected. Five on four as Humphrey is down behind the play and just now crossing midcourt. That leaves Patterson open. Nice pass to Lavis on a block underneath by Humphrey. Good outlet by Stone, and Allison was grabbed by Guyton. Okay, Humphrey can get up and start a fast break. Very impressive. A rookie, good elevation. They have not had a lot of open floor opportunities, Oklahoma. No easy hoops. That was one of the few times. Pretty good save by Guyton trying to stop it. Position. Six team fouls. It's the first personal on Guyton. Second row, Bob Knight animated on the bench for perhaps the first time tonight for Indiana. He was upset at gladness that he didn't go up strong a moment ago when his shot was blocked by Humphrey. How about the catch by Patterson on that alley oop though? He went up big just to gather with a turnover. Johnson, blew by Jimenez. Humphrey there for the offensive and rebound. Humphrey. And Oklahoma has gone from 11 down within seven. Blow by a scoop as he quick. Nothing but steep. Two minutes left in the half. An impressive first half for Indiana. They've been struggling on offense during their recent skid. Averaging 71 points per game over the last six. Well, he's a threat. Break you down. Five on the shot clock. Patterson, one hand, Andre another Patterson. one through the basket. That's the Patterson. Andre McDonald's All-American. Lift he can give his club. Robert Allison guarded by Charlie Miller. Now it's Johnson with Guyton on him. Brewer went by Jimenez. Humphrey the tip in. And how patient was he? A lot of guys would have stopped it on the cylinder. Once again, Brewer able to put the ball on the floor and create some damage. Freshman Humphrey has 10, high arcing three out of the corner for E.J. They are lighting up. How about these shooting drills? Lightens it four three-pointers. He has 14 points. Brewer almost guilty of a clear out with his free arm. And now a foul called. And it is on Brewer for a moving screen after he passed off. And that's the second on Corey. Coming up on Penn's all of the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith will get you up to date on all the tournament news, the scores and highlights, plus a live look at the action going on in the NCAA tournament. All coming up on Penn's oil at the half. Number three, Charlie Miller at the line for Indiana. Forty-five point six seconds remaining in the first half. Two shots. Oklahoma by ten, and Charlie Miller is at the line. He's shooting two. A clinic on motion offense and making Alex shots. They had good opportunities. Good action with their screens. For Indiana, number four, Luke Recker returns, replacing Indiana. Most years of. Makes more free throws than the other team attempts, their opponent's attempt. It's certainly been the case by a wide margin here tonight. Most of the good teams. Duke gets into that league as well. And a long time without Wiley, too, so he's a key guy for Oklahoma. Evan Wiley has been on the bench with three fouls. And Spalding has come in for the first time. Number 44 for Oklahoma. Allison's shot never did get above the rim. Out of bounds. It'll be Indiana ball. Here's your ball. Allison a little bit upset. He was standing out of bounds when he touched it. You think he got an easy one? Indiana the I guess the heel was on the line. Twenty-second timeout has been called by Indiana. The Hoosiers have shot 65 percent from the floor here in the first half. The floor is where Patterson wound up. today here in Washington, D.C., University of Washington Huskies won their first tournament game since 1984 by one point over the six seed Xavier. And then Richmond in a great back-and-forth battle with South Carolina prevailed by one. 
So in round two here on Saturday, the top of the bracket has the 11 seed against the 14 seed. And at 22nd, they get Wrecker in the games. They got another threat outside. It's all motion, so if uh, there's some switching or some jamming, it may not be Wrecker with the jump shot. Let's see what they got going. A little change in the D, Sean. A little box some more, maybe? Yep. yep, they got a little box. Seconds left in the half. Patterson the miss. And it's halftime. Indiana heads to the locker room with an 11-point advantage, matching the largest lead of the first half for the Hoosiers. A.J. Guyton at 14 points in the first half for Indiana. Corey Brewer at 12 for Oklahoma. Here's Andrea Joyce. Coach, a solid first half. Your team shot 65%. Are you pleased, though, with the defensive effort? Well, I'm pleased that you're such a good mathematician. I thought that we did, Andrea. I thought that uh, we played as well as, as I could hope that we could play in the first half. You had expressed some concern yesterday about the way that your team has been finishing games and not finishing strong enough. What can you say to them in the locker room at halftime well, to help sustain the momentum? What we've got is, uh, and the same with Oklahoma, we have a 20-minute game to play now. And whoever plays the best in that 20 minutes, we've got an advantage to start the 20-minute game, and we've just got to try to maintain that advantage. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. That's the end of the first half with the score, Indiana 46 and Oklahoma 35. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and by 11, here's Andrea Joyce live with Kelvin Sampson. Coach, the matchup with Patterson is tough as you expected. Any adjustments on that in the second half? Well, we've got to do a better job of denying his high post flash, and we've got to get into him defensively. Our identity this year has been built or based around how hard we play and how hard we compete. And and I didn't like our defensive effort. They 45 points, 63 percent, 46 points, 63 percent is unacceptable. We got to play harder. What about Wiley? No points, three fouls. What are your plans for him in the second half? Well, hopefully we can keep him out of foul trouble, Andrew. I mean, he's, he's playing hard, but he's been unfortunate. He's been in bad position. He's got to play smarter and uh, not let his emotions get the best of him and just get back to what he's been doing. Hey, Coach, good luck in the second half. Sean? Well, as you might expect, Bill, predictable comments from Kelvin Sampson in that there isn't a coach in the country who's going to be happy about giving up 46 points and a half. Uh, they love to play hard, and they generally do. Defensively, he's right. They've had lapses. Andre Patterson's been able to flash into that post area and do an awful lot of damage. Right here, you'll see, unfortunately, Wiley not set. You'll see the cut to the gut. A nice advantage position for the eye. You get the ball here, Sean. You can do a lot of damage. Turn, square up. Wiley a little bit late, uncomfortable playing it from that distance from the block. Indiana shot an eye-popping 63%. They had 46 points, their second highest total in a half this year. They had 50 and a half against Penn State in a game in Bloomington. Oklahoma turned it over 10 times, and Indiana capitalized for 15 points off those 10 turnovers. A.J. Guyton led Indiana, and Corey Brewer was the leading scorer for Oklahoma, and it'll be Indiana at inbound to begin the second half. Luke Jimenez and A.J. Guyton with Luke Recker, William Gladness, and Andre Patterson for the Hoosiers. A little matchup. This is what they end that they have. I mentioned the box one was a match. They exchange people, start the same way, make them shoot outside. Evan Wiley on the floor to begin the second half. He played just six minutes in the first half because of the foul difficulty. And he combined with Humphrey to deny that pass inside, but they deflected to Patterson. The shot clock did not reset. Guyton hits it from downtown Baltimore. Wow. Well, he had to pay tolls to knock that one down. 44% from three all year long. He is having a terrific night. 17 points on six of eight shooting. Wiley with his first points of the game. And Humphrey with a nice little look by the rook. Dragged his foot and traveled. Gladness, tough shot fading away. Guyton, he's everywhere. Well, he sure is. In or out. And the little guy getting the rebound. Not good presence, but a big people of Oklahoma. Now 19 points 
for A.J. Guyton. Sophomore, Peoria, Illinois, out of Central High School. See, they back right off Wiley, that uh, flash, that's the spot. Patterson was knocking him down. Guyton with his performance tonight, by the way, has now made at least one three-pointer in 32 straight games, and he's added to his Indiana school record for longest three-point streak. Well, they didn't get much out of that high pick and roll. They had a nice little opportunity, bad pass. Patterson. Well, is it possible they could shoot the ball even better in the second half than they did in the first? Yeah, you mentioned only five turnovers, and they shot 62 and a half percent. I mean, that's a tough combination. Valuing the ball and knocking down Time shots. Out. Nobody playing that foul line in that matchup. Patterson with a good read and flash. Elvin Sampson has asked for a 20 second timeout. Time Minute and 57 seconds into the second half. Indiana has expanded its lead to 16 points. Hoosiers out in the first round the NCAA tournament in each of the last three years but they're in the tournament for the 13th year in a row there's the third longest turn streak they've been in the tournament 18 of the last 19 years Indiana still the last division one basketball team to go through an entire season undefeated and they were 32 and 0 Back in 1976. Mm, you were a pup then, right? Great school, probably. Would have been 14 years old. Nahara. Ooh. Off to Brewer. The defense cleared the path. Somebody fell down, and that opened the door for Brewer, who now has 14 points. Yeah, Jimenez was guarding and got lost on the pick. Tough pass, but Gladness was able to handle it. Then he missed the shot, and the rebound got deflected by Patterson to Nahara. They got Wiley on the box. Nice cushion there. Johnson missed a three. Humphrey hit the deck hard after his tip-in try. Guyton saved it after Patterson lost the handle. Indiana now leads Oklahoma 55 to 39 after a layup by Luke Jimenez. Indiana in white, the number seven seed in the East, taking on the 10 seed Oklahoma in first round action. Ryan Humphrey for the Sooners from the free throw line. And the freshman from Tulsa has 12. Uh, Calvin Sampson expressed his dissatisfaction and not playing his hard, getting beaten to the loose balls by Indiana. Wreckers had a relatively quiet night, but they haven't needed a big night from him. Pretty tight into Patterson. He's been all over, Guy. You mentioned deep. Got the rebound that time. A little dish. As we say, Wreckers had a quiet night, but he still had nine points. This hasn't been as noticeable with some of the brilliant performances we've seen from Guyton and Patterson. Hoosiers looking like a much different team than the Indiana team we saw near the end of the regular season. Well, the game we saw with Purdue in the tournament, we both felt was as good as we've seen them all year. Purdue had a great game on that Saturday Big Ten tournament. Tough. Patterson had a shot blocked by Humphrey. And now Brewer racing to catch up with the bouncing ball. Brewer missed a three. Boy, the Sooners look exhausted. They only had two players inside half court. The other three were lingering out by the midcourt line. It's almost when you're playing, you say, I know he's going to shoot, but I'm not going to come down. And they shoot it quickly, and here's the giveaway by Luke Recker, his first, I believe. Yes. And it leads us to a timeout. Been a highlight reel for Indiana. The latest highlight. That pass from Guyton to Patterson. Another of A.J. who has scored 19 points. Leading the Hoosiers to the 16 point lead on Oklahoma. 7 of 10 from the floor is A.J. Indiana as a team still shooting 61%. Oklahoma is at 50% field goal percentage which ordinarily is very good. But not good enough tonight when you can't stop the opponent. Well, Indiana's getting good shots besides shooting very well. Look at pound it inside, get some inside out basketball. Robert Allison fouled on a reach in from behind by Recker. And that's the second foul on Luke Recker. Foul call on the Hoosiers, number four, Luke Recker. 15 21 remaining. 
Temple earlier today suffered its worst loss in its history in the NCAA tournament, losing to its former Atlantic 10 mate, West Virginia, South Carolina. There's a highly seeded team upset in the first round for the second straight year. Last year is a two seed. South Carolina lost to Coppin State. This year is a three seed. They lost earlier today here in Washington, D.C. to the Richmond Spiders. And it was not a fluke. Nahara stopped as he tried to put a shot back up. That guy all over. Jimenez. Got a stroke. A nice give up by Guyton, too. Assist Guyton. Luke Jimenez, sophomore from Redwood Falls, Minnesota, has five points. He was an invited walk-on to the Indiana program. They knew about him, but didn't have a scholarship for him. They invited him to walk on to the team, and he did. And here's a chance for a three-point play for Renzai Stone. They got to take it out of a little, show what they're made of. And Renzai with a little power move, a will basket at the end of this play. But just to give up nice and easy, Jimenez gets the puppy set, knocks it down. <laughs> they are not only getting One good shot shots, but even the ones that are tough, they're making. Renzai Stone with the missed free throw, and Richard Mandeville. A rebound of the miss. Well, under 15 minutes remaining now, and Indiana is comfortably ahead by 17 points. John McDonough with Bill Rafter and Andrea Joyce. A telecast from the MCI Center being produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Mike Arnold. Pretty good stop that time by Allison. Nice denial. Wiley's wide open, and they don't give it to him. Here they go. Just not timing the dive. And a foul as Gladness tried to step in front of the pass. He got a piece of the man in the low post. No, William Indiana, committed his first foul. Free, active, ball doesn't arrive on time. Pretty good play by Gladness. And look at Mandeville. They have done a nice job sniffing out any post entries. Nahara off the glass and it wouldn't go. And Gladness was able to keep it alive. Jimenez with Guyton, Gladness, Wrecker, and Mandeville. The Indiana Hoosiers. Wrecker. Nice move. Shed Nahara with the fake. And managed to knock it in from the free throw line. And Luke Wrecker is his first bucket of the second half and 11 for the ball game. He has a nice feeling. Mandeville always sniffing to help out on Evan Wiley. They finally get a good look and they come big. Looks bad pass. Stone. Indiana Johnson for a pitch that was just a bit outside. Indiana uses motion, but lately, the last few years, the ability to dribble extended to the better players. A record being one of the nice step through and under. He's become a real crowd favorite. Assembly Hall and Bloomington, Luke Record. And he was stopped at the rim. That had to be something, huh? By Wiley. Oh. Looked like he had taken a right from George Foreman, but he's okay, Record, as he heads the other way. Stone with a chance for a three-point play. Well, they get a little break on the far end as Luke gets hit pretty hard. Unfortunately, nothing goes. Let's see, right there, there's yeah, got to be something. Huh? Foul. He was staggered by the contact. Of course, he's had a broken rib since that episode at the rim in Bloomington. Sergio McLean. He's got a little toughness in him. Yes. Wrecked him so. and One near killed him. <laughs> <laughs> that little penetration. <laughs> A little counter. Renzai is really stepped to get a lane violation. Not necessary. Yeah, Stone made the free throw. He would have had another chance because Wrecker did step in the lane. Wrecker 6'6", 190 pounds. Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana in high school last year. He averaged 27 points and 7 rebounds at DeKalb High School. There's a three for Luke Wrecker. Before the game, he did a Bill Bradley on us. You were busy doing homework. He went around the lane, knocked in all the shots. He was unerring on his practice tosses. Typical of that one. Now he's in the second half, and Hartford Princeton has the lead. Utah with a comfortable edge at the break over the 14 seed San Francisco. Tennessee and Illinois State in the Taiwan later tonight here. Connecticut against Fairleigh Dickinson, the Big East champions against the Knights out of the Northeast Conference. Patterson called for a second foul. I'm sorry, Sean, you practice hard by saying don't 
leave the basketball. I mean, particularly with a guy that gets you one, no communication, something you have to do against a motion offense. You've got to express yourself. Somebody should have stayed on the basketball, particularly with a great deep threat like Wrecker. You can sense the disappointment in Kelvin Sampson when he chatted with Andrew Joyce at halftime about his team's defense. They're known as a good defensive team. They've been anything but that tonight. And supposedly, uh, all year long, he's felt they've played hard and physical. You did not see that in the first half. Humphrey made the first. And the second. Ryan's an excellent student, in addition to being a fine basketball player on the Big 12 all academic team with a 3.36 grade point average. And Gladness lost the ball over the end line. That pressure, not ready for it. And they had a lot of people. All they had to do was go over the top. And they had themselves a basket. There were four maroon shirts down that end. Long comeback trail in front of Oklahoma. Brewer, a strong drive. He's had a very quiet second half. Bob Knight saying that his team doesn't finish well lately. The last five, six minutes have not done what they've done the prior 35. No catch by Gladness of the Jimenez pass. And a foul up high on Michael Johnson as he collided with Jimenez. First foul on Johnson. Michael Johnson, team's first of the half. That's just the first foul of the half on Oklahoma. Time to check out the Deanna. We mentioned 13 in a row. Ooh. And a bad pass record. And it intercepted by Stone. Nine turnovers by IU. Got to go cross court. They're going to double. Brewer steps into a three. And Humphrey underneath. Nice pass. Robert Appleson. And Oklahoma is chipping away. And Bob Knight seems to be pondering a timeout. That pass had a lot of heat on it. This pressure's got them a uh, little steps first. That was a call that could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. Allison called for a block, his second foul. 11.46 remaining. Team Oklahoma second. has chipped away to get Nine back out. within 13. A 19-point deficit into a 13-point disadvantage. Indiana still at 62% from the floor for the game. And A.J. Guyton is 19. 16 for Corey Brewer of Oklahoma. Uh, this press keeps the ball out of Guyton's hand, so that 1 2 1 1 effective. And Indiana 2 now, not comfortable late in the games. How they react mentally is very important. Look at this, not a good look at all. Good defense by Stone. Bob Knight off the bench to get Wrecker back into the ball game after the turnover. Johnson, Allison, a long three. And the rebound saved by Guyton, but to Allison. Starting to step up the tempo, too. Being a little more physical, banging people now, Oklahoma. Stone, one-on-one -on -one with Gladness. Now it's Johnson guided by Guyton. Still 20 on the shot clock for Oklahoma. 11 minutes left in the second half. Indiana by 13. The Brewers got to get himself free. Jim is doing a nice job tagging him. Brewer with the shot clock running out now. They go inside. Humphrey. Nice tip by Stone, but it wouldn't drop. What a great post pass, too. A great effort by Renzai. A couple of chances for Oklahoma, and they can't squander many. Down by 13 with 10 and a half minutes left. That was rather rejected by Humphrey. Bob Knight wanted a goal 10, but he shouldn't argue that one too vociferously because that's what got him in trouble the last time. Uh, that one was uh, that was close to being on the way down, but what nice penetration and control by Guyton. I mean, he has been not only explosive, good feel for the game. Jimenez sending it up high to Charlie Miller. Jimenez Miller record, Guyton and Patterson for Indiana. Guyton from the free throw line now has 27. And that last trip, Johnson had a record. They got something they can call upon if it stays that matchup. Pretty good posting up. Guyton with 21 tonight. That was 518 points for the season. First Indiana player to score 400 points in both his freshman and sophomore season since Calvin Cheney did it in 90 and 91. Nice tip in by Humphrey off the miss from Allison. 
16 for Ryan Humphrey. Guyton. A rare miss tonight for AJ. Johnson at the deck and called a timeout because he didn't want to travel. How, how smart, quick Tyout as well. They always talk about the 10-point barrier. Well, Oklahoma getting to that, getting a little flow to the game. The soft touch by Allison permits Ryan Humphrey to attack the 10, so they're doing some things around the hole. Coming up next, game four of our quadruple header featuring action in both the East and West regions. In Hartford, Connecticut, Eastern Michigan takes on Michigan State at approximately 9.57. That's the same tip time for the final game of the night here between Fairley Dickinson and Connecticut out west Nichols State in Arizona at 10.07. Nebraska and Arkansas at approximately 10.12. Thirty-six remaining in this one. The Indiana Hoosiers have a 13-point lead. 67-54. The largest lead for IU was 19. And Oklahoma has the ball in the hands of Michael Johnson with Eduardo Nahara, Renzi Stone, Evan Wiley, and Robert Allison on the court. The Brewers on the bench. Wiley had a chance for three. Had that dropped to get it to an even 10. But He'll shoot two to get the Sooners within 11. The second foul committed by Charlie Those Miller. Foul committed by number three, Charlie Miller. Seven consecutive first round losses. Seven. Oklahoma with four. And Evan Indiana Wiley with three. Oklahoma has been tournament all four years under Kelvin Sampson, but they haven't been able to get by. Huh? Now Ron Felling, these one of the assistants for Bob Knight, was saying that their concern was Wiley down on the box. He has not been a factor against Bob Knight's club. It's one of the few times he's been able to do some damage. Because he had the three fouls, a little bit of a dilemma. And he's big on the ball, and they get it in quickly. Four points for Wiley, who gave them a big effort in the Big 12 championship game, lost to Kansas, 13 points and 11 rebounds. And there's Jimenez, all the way to the basket, and he has seven. Where was the D? Nobody attentive. Big night for Jimenez. He averages just under three points per game. And a three by Johnson. So Oklahoma's on a 13 to four run. Patterson running the floor. And Guyton just sensational. Good feel and confidence too. 18 for Andre Patterson. 8.50 remaining. Oklahoma down 12. Record great anticipation of the Allison bounce pass. Two big plays there. Patterson sprinting the floor. The acknowledgement that time, Wrecker, nice dive in front of the low post. Jimenez guarded by Allison. Now Guyton went by Johnson, ran over Nahara, an offensive foul called on A.J. Guyton. Oh, you need easy baskets in any game, but the ability to penetrate, this is just bad defense by Oklahoma. They had press, they didn't get back, and Patterson gets the puppies going, and Guyton, who's just been extraordinary, getting it to his teammates. Nice catch and gather by Andre Patterson, the new Andre Patterson. Inside Patterson, the decided edge in the one-on-one -on -one battle with Wiley. Wiley was saddled with the three quick fouls in six minutes in the first half. Oklahoma is within striking distance. Down to eight minutes and 12 seconds left. Corey Brewer is back in the lineup. He dished to Wiley in traffic and a held ball. Jimenez reached held in ball. and it goes back to Oklahoma with the arrow. Wiley does a nice job opening up to get vision on the basketball. Just couldn't squeeze it quick enough to elevate to the goal. You mentioned Brewer's speed turned the corner. He and Johnson are extraordinary. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Oklahoma can't get it in in a five-second count. Five-second violation. Mm -hmm. Wiley 14th gonna... turnover by well, Oklahoma. And Wiley didn't get himself free. That was part of the problem. And Kelvin taking him out for that reason. For Oklahoma number 33, Renzi Stone. Renzi Stone Wiley. comes back in. Now it is Wrecker into Guyton with Jimenez, Miller, and Patterson. Wiley still does not have a rebound in the game. Brewer, Johnson, Humphrey, Stone, and Nahara for Oklahoma. Wrecker, a quick three. Just keep acting. Three points for Luke Wrecker. Not paying attention. He's got a little smile on his face running back. He's gotten a couple of open looks. Shocking himself. 
Third three of the night for Wrecker. He has 17 points. Brewer guarded by Jimenez. Well, they had Humphrey. You got to get it in there. Nahara. Wrecker running at him. Eduardo Nahara. Throws in a three. He has five points. And Wrecker took his eye off the pass and dropped it out of bounds. Bobby Knight isn't taking his eye off record. A moment ago, record knocked in a three. Indiana still with breathing room up by 12. Indiana by 12, 7-13 remaining. CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Three-point field goal percentage. Indiana, 56%. With all your tournament team sortable stats, real-time scores, in-depth information. Much more at March Mayhem on cbs.sportsline.com. We mentioned earlier the relationship between Corey Brewer and William Gladness. Both grew up in West Memphis, Arkansas. A very tough city just outside Memphis, Tennessee. One of the highest crime rates in the nation. Nahara with the ball for Oklahoma. Tough pass. Right, now a foul. Good teams get it in low, though, when they need points. This is a big basket, big hoop, big trip for Oklahoma. First foul on Jimenez, ninth on the team. Ryan Humphrey goes to the Ryan Humphrey, the free throw shooter. Shooting two. He's shooting two. Indiana up 12, 6.51 remaining, but they haven't been able to put the suitors away. First free throw by Ryan Humphrey, just barely grazed the front rim. Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery in Washington, D.C., Oklahoma the 10 seed, Indiana the 7 seed, two costly misses by Ryan Humphrey. And a foul in the backcourt on Brewer. Brewer and William Gladness grew up on the same street. Both went to West Memphis High School and Carl Albert Jr. College in Oklahoma. But unfortunately, one other thing they have in common is both were shot as teenagers. Well, they were growing up in West Memphis in the fall of 1990. Corey Brewer's trying to act as a peacemaker in a dispute between a couple of youngsters in his neighborhood. And he was hit with 12 shotgun pellets, two of them still lodged in his body. He was hit in the arm and the back. His Uncle Dennis, a firefighter, responding to the scene past Corey a few days later. He to decide if you want to live or die. Because if you keep hanging around with the people you're hanging around with, you're going to die. From that day on, Corey Brewer got very actively involved in his church. He started hanging around the gym much more often and immersed himself in basketball. And his life's been on the right track ever since. And meanwhile, William Gladys never played high school basketball, but he was 6'8". Brewer knew about him because he'd seen him on the playground. Wrecker. I think they whistle, and the officials are conferring. I think the push was behind. A uh, good call. The mm -hmm. push was re and Wrecker's derriere, and then the charge ensued. You can just see the push there. Now that's what initiated it. And Brewer with the giveaway. And it's a big call. The fourth foul on Brewer. Teams four. Bob Knight. Questioning officials about something else. You know, William Gladys, he was 18 when he was shot. He was walking with a friend. Someone was trying to steal jewelry off his friend. He and the friend turned to run. And Gladys was gunned down. His wound so severe he had to learn how to walk all over again. And Corey Brewer's Uncle Dennis was again the ambulance driver. He told Corey about that. Corey Brewer called Gladness in the hospital the next day and asked him the same question. Do you want to live or die? And obviously Gladness answered the right direction. <laughs> and he turned his life around, started hanging with a different crowd, and it was Brewer, who even though Gladys hadn't played high school basketball, seen him play on the playgrounds, told the junior college coach in Oklahoma about Gladness. Next thing you know, they're teammates at Carl Albert Junior College, and they've been friends, and here they are playing against each other in the NCAA tournament. Their lives have come in full circle. And right now, Indiana showing some signs of cracking his penetration. 
And they're not quick to the basketball like they were earlier. This is a big one. Allison's three makes it a seven-point game. 11 points for Robert Allison. And Bob, by his own admission, said they haven't been able to close out games. And Oklahoma, a little more like Kelvin Sampson's team. Hard and physical. Eight unanswered points. Nahara called for a foul away from the ball. And that's four on Eduardo Nahara. Uh, able to get some inside passes, then all of a sudden the kick back out. And Robert Allison, who makes about 36% from three, able to convert. And mentally tough. Uh, Kelvin said all year long they've been resilient, competitive. That's why all that disappointment at halftime. Team fouls on Oklahoma, so not yet a one-on-one -on -one situation. Under five minutes remaining. Now Indiana, a bit of a hang-on mode here. A nice denial on the wings, too. Record by Johnson in the air, and Johnson bumped him on the way down, committed his second. Now, for both of us, this pump fake wouldn't work simply because we can't shoot the basketball as good as a guy like Record. But when you've got his ability and he keeps active, keeps motoring just a little head and shoulder, able to draw the D and Johnson. He was out of bounds as he went for the steal and he crashed into the press table. And his teammates making certain that he's okay and Michael is. Inbounding to Gladness, the handoff to Jimenez, Patterson of Wrecker also on the court for Indiana. I think Guyton's got to do some damage if they get away from Patterson on a double. Patterson operating on Humphrey, tough shot, wouldn't go. The rebound got tipped to Johnson. Oklahoma down seven, a chance to move closer. Nahara, shut off. Humphrey in close. Banked it up, no good. Rebound controlled by Patterson. And a foul. And it's on Humphrey. That was a costly miss by Ryan Humphrey. Now he knew it too. That's what usually happens. You get a little over aggressive pursuing the basketball. Now, he banged his head on the floor. He's been grabbing at the back of his head ever since he hit the deck. The second foul and puts Oklahoma over the limit of one and one opportunity upcoming for Andre Patterson. Number 24 right here. We're going to just see after that miss, the aggressive play, unable to come up with anything. He's trying to sucker the official in as well as Andre Patterson. Patterson at the line with 18 points. Still in the end of by seven. Michael Johnson lays it in for Oklahoma. They snuck out, Sean. A little leak, and nobody attentive on Indiana. Indiana had a 19-point lead. It's down to five. Bob Knight talked yesterday about his team's inability to play well in the closing minutes. Patterson with a big hook for the reeling Hoosiers. Uh, he's looked at him in a little post move before, didn't convert that time, stepped out a little bit. That's where Wiley's at the disadvantage. And we welcome those of you who watched Princeton defeat UNLV. We're at the MCI Center, sold out in Washington, D.C. Record nearly with a steal. Nahara checked the shot clock, still plenty of time there. Allison hit a big three a moment ago, not that time. Guyton the rebound. And that was big because it was five on four. Record was in the backcourt after the hustle play. And the time runs down to 3-10 remaining. Indiana leads by seven. Guyton thought about the quick three. Two-man game there. His three try is short. Pulled down by Johnson. Three minutes left. Oklahoma still on the comeback trail. Renzi Stone way off. And the rebound tipped out to Jimenez. It's not the shot Kelvin Sampson wanted. Glad was stripped on the floor by Johnson. 2.40 remaining. Both Cubs look a little bit tired. Wiley unable to get a touch down there. Great defense by Patterson. They really need to get Corey Brewer and Ryan Humphrey back in the game. Yeah, they're at the table, waiting to come back in. But meanwhile, valuable time is running off the clock. In the stone. That's 
More of the kind of shot that Sampson wants from him. And faulty post-defense. William Gladys got caught so low. Calvin Sampson called the timeout, Bill, I think, because he wants to get Brewer and Humphrey back in right now. Now, the inability to stop him down low. Leads by five with 2.17 remaining. Both teams in the bonus situation. And Oklahoma has just one timeout left. The arrow points in favor of Indiana. It rests in Dayton's hands as to the direction. They're struggling down the stretch. The guards have to take over. Oklahoma, essentially a seven-man team. They've played eight players, but Alex Balding played just one minute in the first half. These seven have battled back from 19 down to within five. We approach two minutes left. Right into Jimenez. Richard Mandeville back on the court. Number 21 for Indiana. Patterson and Wrecker the rest of the five. Patterson in the lane a long time. Was fouled and a chance for three. Big basket. They first tried to isolate Guyton on the same side with Patterson. He has stepped up magnificently. Wants the ball. Doing very constructive things. Here's the turn to square up and now the little step through. Take the hook, the semi jump hook, which is a rattler. Very impressive all evening long. When they needed something, he has not minded at all taking the shot. Madison missed the free throw. Humphrey the rebound. The foul on Ryan Humphrey was his third. 147 remaining. Indiana by seven. Allison back to Brewer. Off to Wiley for an easy two. That is a nice quick hitter too. A little flare and then the penetration. Jimenez. He'd be the worst free throw shooter on the court for Indiana. And he's not a bad free throw shooter at 69%. I a good free throw team. 73% collectively. Patterson surrounded. Patterson. Nice move. Fouled again. This time... By Evan Wiley, his fourth. And you mentioned Jimmy, that is, uh, what a nice little feed to the post and good presentation by now Patterson. And he came with a double, he was smart enough to avoid it. Team's ninth foul. The ninth team foul against Oklahoma, so one more and Indiana will shoot two and every Andre Oklahoma Patterson foul the rest of the way. The line, shooting two. Patterson. His first made free throw. He's now one out of three from the stripe. 23 points for the senior. And, and you can see by his ability how it can be disappointing when he can't do this more often mm -hmm. at Indiana. As Indiana fans, many of them believe he has the ability to do it night after night, and mm -hmm. sometimes it seems to be just a matter of intensity or focus for That's Andre a, Patterson. There's a niceness about him. As Brewer once again gets to the rim. And and he's away. fouled by Wrecker. That's three on Luke Wrecker. Well, this is a seven-point game, and it rates as a major blowout here in Washington, D.C., considering what we have here this afternoon. Two one-point games. Washington over Xavier and Richmond beat South Carolina by a point. The final game of the night upcoming, Connecticut Two against Fairleigh Dickinson. That should be a very entertaining game. FDU likes to go up and down, and Connecticut has had success over the years with that style, too. And they both like the press, which will exacerbate the situation a little bit more. Nahara grimaced as Brewer missed the first free throw. He has 16 points, but 12 of those were in the first half. That's right. They can, if he makes it, can get that press set up. It was a problem earlier for Indiana. And they go with Lewis now for that reason, Indiana. And number 24, Michael Lewis for Indiana. Spalding comes in and Brewer goes out. Spalding might be the designated fouler here. One oh one remaining. <laughs> Did you see and that? And apparently Spalding was the designated fouler for Senator Oklahoma as he tackled Jimenez into the scorer's table. Uh, Mike Reardon used to do that Senator for the Dark old Oak Knicks. Red Holfer used to put him in. He would give one right away. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad move, though. That was the instruction that Spalding received. He carried out the instructions to a T. He <laughs> took Jimenez right into the press table at center court. And Jimenez, a 69% free throw shooter, was the man to foul. Worst free throw shooter on the floor. 
And then he missed the first. Number 21, Richard. So it is still Indiana by six with 101 remaining. Ryan Humphrey comes back in. Spalding, <laughs> after his quick foul, goes back to the bench along with Stone. So it's Humphrey, Brewer, Johnson, Wiley, and Allison for the Sooners. Two misses by Jimenez. One minute left. One, One minute, minute left. Oklahoma within six. At one point, the Sooners trailed by 19. Brewer, Johnson, open for a three. Oh, does that get him right back in? Quick timeout. Oh, what the three can do to change your fortune. Penetration, kick it back out. Nice acknowledgement by Johnson. And the last timeout burned by Oklahoma. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery and Andrea Joyce back at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Well, it was a comfortable 19-point lead for Indiana. It is now a three-point edge for the Hoosiers, and they're hanging on with 49 and a half to go. And your man is bad. This is what I'd do with you if you played for me. Put you in the foul somebody gets you. <laughs> My problem would be I couldn't catch up with the guy I needed to foul. Now let's see. Jimenez would still be the man to foul. Going strictly by the percentages. They put Michael Lewis and he's got the shooter back in, and that's a 10 second foul to the backcourt. They were trying to avoid the foul and forgot about concentrating, getting over the timeline. So Spalding, in effect, had an impact twice now, once with the giveaway. Oklahoma has no timeouts remaining. Now a three pointer could tie. And you'd have to think they'd try to get it to Brewer or Johnson if they're eyeing a three. Allison also a good three-point shooter at 35 percent. And so with this amount of time to go, I think they should just go ahead and try and get on the board. Yep. Same kind of pressure defense, then decide to give one if they have to. Now some confusion among the officials. They're huddling by the official scorers area. And the game clock will be adjusted to show 39 point problem with the seconds. game clock. They've added less than a second, 39.5. And that's a good change because it was at 49.5 when Indiana and inbound. Ten. If 10 seconds come off and you get the count, it should be 39.5. Allison plays it in over record. Now Michael Johnson, Wiley, Humphrey, and Brewer. The rest of the five for OU. A double pick. Brewer to the basket, lays it in, and a chance for a three-point play. He was fouled by Rutgers. Wow. Unbelievable. The ability to bounce. I thought that was a play on at the end, though, Sean. Just scored a goal and let him inbound. Rutger underneath the 10. Brewer earlier dribble, drive, dish for the three. This time, all on his own. The little slide by. Gets a piece, and <laughs> Kelvin, incredible comeback. And the disbelief etched on Bob Knight's face. Brewer, Brewer needs the free throw to tie it. He has 19 points. He's an 80% free throw shooter. He gets the bounce from 19 down to a tie. For Kelvin Sampson in Oklahoma with 29.7 seconds left. Replacing Brewer. That's Karen Sampson in the black and white check jacket, Kelvin Sampson's wife. Indiana can hold for the last shot. Jimenez to Guyton. Seven unanswered points by Oklahoma to pull even. They ought to go to Patterson when they can. Time up. Time. Called by Indiana with 11.7 left. What a day, Sean McDonough. <laughs> oh. Two one-point games here in Washington, D.C., and this one goes down to the buzzer. Eleven point seven excruciating seconds remaining for Karen Sampson. Indiana at a 19 point lead. It's now a tie game. Both teams with a double bonus. Oklahoma without a timeout. The arrow favors IU. 
The Hoosiers led 65-46 with 12.58 left, but they've been outscored 34-15 since. Geithner, Patterson have to get a touch, I think. Michael Lewis with the ball. Patterson has the touch, guarded by Wiley. Patterson blocked by Humphrey. Allison throws it the length of the court, and we're heading for overtime. Unbelievable reaction. They knew where it was going. Pay attention to detail. That was the fourth block of the game by Humphrey. He came over to help on the double and swatted Patterson's shot. And Patterson committed totally to the jumper. And right here you can see the read and the nice zone up. Allison helping, so they had great confidence as to what they were going to do. It all depended where the post-up came. In Indiana. First overtime game of the season for Indiana. Oklahoma played one and lost at Mississippi State 67-65. That was a controversial game. They thought they had a tip-in at the buzzer of the first overtime to force the second. The officials waved it off, saying the tip-in was late. Advantage Oklahoma psychologically? Yeah, I think they've got to feel pretty good. Wiley's the guy that now has to step up both defensively and on the offensive end. Give him some touches. Here they go with their matchup zone. Forcing the deep shot. Trying to protect Brewer and Wiley. They're two key players each with four fouls. Jimenez to Gladness. Guyton, Wrecker, and Patterson open the extra session for Bobby Knight. It's Brewer, Johnson, Allison, Wiley, and Humphrey for Oklahoma. Nice, nice pass. pass, indeed. <laughs> Patterson scores off Is the that that come? <laughs> Oh, Nice little flash, too, by Patterson once again. Good presentation. I guess we can sit here as long as we have today. We should be able to anticipate what, what the other might be saying. Fantastic day of basketball. Unbelievable. Two one-point games in this building in the afternoon session, and now an overtime game in the first game of the night. Brewer, unlucky. That was halfway down, and it popped out to record. Oklahoma, during its comeback from 19 down, had runs of 12 to 2 and 8 to nothing. Wrecker. We have an air ball. He's trying to get that fifth foul called against Brewer. And that trip is straight up man to man. See the assistant coach holding up the word loop. And right now, I just think inside's the key. I mean, go with penetration, but why not use Wiley down there? Allison nearly traveled, but never did leave his tippy toes. And they got the high-low Humphrey not being played by Patterson. That's why Wiley can't get a touch. Down to five. Time to move for Johnson. Johnson threw it up wildly as he collided with Patterson. So Oklahoma still has not scored here in overtime. And Guyton was fouled by Johnson, his third. The team fouls carry over, so both teams in the double bonus. Washington a winner by one over Xavier in the first game here today. Richmond by one over South Carolina. They'll play on Saturday. Later tonight, Connecticut takes on Fairleigh Dickinson. Much later than they anticipated now. As that time will be pushed back past 10 o'clock because of this overtime session. Guyton has 22 as he made the first free throw. Here comes Eduardo Nahara for Robert Allison. Uh, two shooters substituting for one another. A little blow. Indiana knows where it's coming now. Brewer's going to get a touch. And he's jamming up on Wiley, so he's not going to be a factor. 4-0 Indiana in the overtime, nearly two minutes into the extra session. See Patterson staying right in there to help out on Wiley. He's not even paying attention to Humphrey. Brewer with Jimenez defending. Johnson thought about a three. Some of the Oklahoma shooters look tentative here in overtime. Wiley stripped twice. He tries for a third time. Traveling the call. Kelvin Sampson wanted a foul. I thought that I think it was pretty good play. A lot of slaps. He felt it was on the hand. Everybody digging and scratching. Wiley could, it's almost like being in New York on the subway, huh? Everybody around you, scratching and clawing. Nearly midway through overtime. They are midway through the extra session now. Oklahoma still has not scored. And Indiana spreads the floor in the half court against pressure defense. Wrecker. 
And what a post up by Patterson. Big time dish and then the sleight of hand by the rookie Luke. Does this undermanned Oklahoma team have another comeback in its arsenal? A blocking foul called against Patterson. So Brewer will shoot two, and that's the third personal on Patterson. Well, coaches are delighted when you're unselfish, but what a terrific look, both by Patterson and cool hand Luke. Corey Brewer at the line, shooting Corey two. Brewer. At the line to 20 points. Number 33, Rinzai Stone, Rinzai Stone, Stone back in Rinzai for Wiley. Two free throws by Corey Brewer. First points for Oklahoma in overtime with two minutes left in overtime. It's Indiana by four. And Jim has that trouble. One, three, one trap. All alone, Gladness again. Uh, they were strong early and no one recovered baseline. A couple of easy baskets for Indiana against this scrambling Oklahoma defense. Brewer shut off by Jim Inez. Nahara was deflected by record. Patterson. Now Gladness, Indiana with the ball up six, minute 33 left in overtime. And still 20 on the shot clock as Humphrey commits the foul, his fourth. And off the basketball, Nahara was given a foul on Gladness. I think they're going to have to do something with that particular play. This is the 1-3-1 trap. They got a piece, and you can just see top side doesn't get down. And Bob Knight enjoying that particular play, and he wants them to get back and guard a little bit. But that's an interesting. They gave a foul without the basketball being involved on record at half court in regulation. They just tried to give one to Gladness who would have not involved in the play at all. I think it's something they're going to have to address. Record for the season, 79%, but today just four out of seven. And he has missed just one shot from the floor in overtime. And the lead is seven with a minute 20 left. 18 points for the freshman Luke Record. Screen down. Brewer. Again defended by Jimenez. Allison using a stone screen. Wiley took a lot of time off the clock there. That possession was 20 seconds long, but Oklahoma got the bucket it needed to get within five. Oklahoma uses its only timeout in overtime. 101 remaining in overtime. Indiana leads by five. Overtime with 101 remaining. Indiana leads by five. Upcoming games, Eastern Michigan and Michigan State just underway at Hartford. Here in Washington, D.C., Fairley Dickinson will take on Connecticut. Defending national champ Arizona begins its defense against Nichols State in just a few minutes. Eastern Michigan with the early lead over the Spartans. And Alex Spalding is back into the game. He seems to be the designated fouler. Here he comes to pass over his head to record. Tough pass. Lewis moved it quickly to Guyton. Oklahoma letting a lot of time yeah, come I thought off the clock here. But they give one, Sean. Record. Move the ball if you're Indiana, and you got to give one. They finally oh. get there. But why would oh. you do that after 24 seconds had come off the clock and you fouled their best free throw shooter, Lewis, at 85%? Reaction. And sometimes mentally, because of the physical tiredness, you just don't react the way you should. Mm -hmm. Lewis has not attempted a free throw in this game. 80 for 94 for the year. Number 31, Murray Brewer replaces Spalding for Oklahoma. Spalding goes out. Corey Brewer back in. The first point of the game for Michael Lewis, the sophomore. He made just one out of two. Well, they're within two three-point field goals here. Quick 30 seconds left in overtime. Johnson steps back for a three. That's 
stays in. And when Down Johnson. came out and went back Three in. Pointer. He didn't really get a good bump. Not good defense by Indiana. Got to give it right away. Step up. Humphrey has fouled out if that's on Ryan, and he was the only player in the neighborhood. So Ryan Humphrey fouls out for Oklahoma with 24 seconds left in overtime. Oh, goodness. Both teams reaching back. Last amount of gas in the tank. And Mahara now will substitute. The ability to dribble the ball quickly in favor of Oklahoma now is Johnson can sprint, speed dribble, also Brewer. That's a disqualifying foul. He's replaced by number 21 in Waterdome and knock that off. Wrecker will go to the line. Indiana has struggled from the line. 17 out of 27, that's 63%. They're 73% team for the season. For Indiana, number 30, William Gladness returns. Wrecker's just five out of eight from the line. Ordinarily 79%. Spalding in as well now, three-point addition. He can shoot them. And 31 for the year. A miss. And he made the second. It's a four-point lead and a timeout called by Indiana. 24.2 left in overtime. Indiana takes the full We'll return to the now. MCI Center in Washington, D.C. in a moment. <laughs> Oklahoma's ball with 24.2 seconds left in overtime, and the Sooners down by four. Both teams well into the double bonus now. Oklahoma again without any timeouts. The arrow is in their favor. This is not the only overtime game Going on at the moment in the NCAA tournament out in Sacramento, Tennessee and Illinois State are 72 apiece in OT. Uh, now you got to go for two real fast and give the foul. Brewer runs right over Wrecker and it's an offensive foul on Corey Brewer and he has fouled out. Well, that sort of makes up for that one earlier. I didn't think Wrecker fouled underneath the rim on that three-point play late. But you know they're coming, so you get the puppy set and offer it up. Sometimes it hurts more than others. Corey Brewer fouls out of what could be his last game, barring an amazing turn of events now. 22 points and one rebound for the senior in West Memphis, Arkansas. And not a whole lot of decisions over there. Well, it's the big guy back in. they got to be ready now to give the foul immediately. I don't think you have a choice as to who to foul. Even if Oklahoma could force another overtime, we wonder how they could compete in the second OT without Humphrey and without Brewer. Alex Brown would have to be a miracle man. Who's been busier than most during the course of this year. Alex Spalding has committed three fouls. I would guess that, that those three fouls have been in less than three minutes of playing time. He got his name in the book quickly. Yes, he did. And Lewis, two you mentioned the Michael ability Lewis. to convert. Missed one of two the last trip, 85%. Mm. Even their best free throw shooter missing. So, uncharacteristically tough time at the line tonight. Two out of five. It's a five-point lead for Indiana. 18.6 left. Johnson was guarded by Patterson. Record swats the shot by Spaulding. So you need a five. That would have been a good two. Go get the two. Foul again. Mm -hmm. Now I think you're almost committed to going for the three. Wiley with the screen. Now they go all the way. Position. Johnson lost it on the way up. Nahara couldn't control, and Indiana is going to survive and win a first-round game for the first time in four years. And that's the correct word, survive. And maybe survival of the finish, more bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelvin not getting that great first half and the reality setting in with the family at this point. A tremendous comeback, under 13 minutes left, down by 19. Coach Sampson and the Sooners will be knocked out in the first round for the fourth straight year. There'll be five first round exits in a row for Oklahoma dating back to the Billy Tubbs era. 
Chevrolet players of the game are Corey Brewer of Oklahoma and Andre Patterson of Indiana. Wrecker makes the first free throw and sending you to the other overtime game in four seconds. Tennessee and Illinois State in the extra session. Oklahoma's season will end at 22 and 11. Indiana has its 20th victory of the year. Now 20 and 11. It was a major struggle and Coach Knight will have much that he won't be pleased about about this one. 94-87 Indiana beats Oklahoma in overtime. And Indiana will meet the winner of the last game of the day here in Washington, D.C. Connecticut and Fairleigh Dickinson coming up in about a half an hour. Let's return you now to New York and Greg Gumbel. Sean and Bill, an overtime game and two one-pointers. I don't know if the tickers can stand it anymore. Meanwhile, at the Arco Arena in Sacramento, Illinois State and Tennessee are in overtime. Under two and a half minutes to play in the OT. Tennessee by two. Let's take you there now and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco.